let's use the four-step solving process. So for our state step, we need our hypotheses, our significance level, and we need to define any parameters of interest. So we'll say we wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level. Our null hypothesis is that mu equals 825. Since the manufacturer is probably interested in the brightness level being anything other than 825, either greater or less than 825, our alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 825. And we'll define mu as the true mean brightness level of the manufacturer's CFL light bulbs. We need two things in our plan step, our inference method and also to check conditions. So if conditions are met, we will use a one sample t-test for population mean. Our first condition is the random one. Now these were 14 randomly selected bulbs, so that condition is met. Next is the independent condition. Since we're sampling without replacement, we need to assume the manufacturer has at least 140 bulbs for the 10% condition to be met. That seems like a fair assumption, so that condition is met. For the normal condition, since our sample size is only 14, it's too small for the central limit theorem to apply. So we need to check that the sample is roughly normally distributed. To do this, press the STAT button on the calculator. Now press ENTER. These are our list, and we're going to type all of our sample data, these 14 light bulb brightnesses, into list 1. Alright, now we need to check that they're roughly normally distributed. Let's start with the histogram. So press second and y equals to get to the stat plot menu. Press enter and turn plot one on. Now for type, scroll over to histogram and we're gonna press zoom and the number nine. All right, this looks unimodal and roughly symmetric. So that's a good sign. It does appear roughly normal at this time or at least not super non-normal. Let's check for outliers. Press second and y equals Press enter again, and go over to modified box plot. That's this one here. Now, if we press zoom and then nine again, since I don't see any symbols like asterisk or small boxes there, there's no outliers in our data. So between it looking unimodal and roughly symmetric and having no outliers, I'm comfortable saying this is approximately normally distributed. So it's safe to use T procedures. Now we're ready for the do step. If you press stat and you go over to test, click T test. Now it says, do we have the data or the summary statistics? In this case, we have the data. So it says, what's your mean of interest? Ours is 825. We want to use the data in list one, and we're going to use each data value once. And we're interested in, is there evidence it's any value other than 825? So we'll leave that as not equal to. When we push calculate, here's our test statistic, 0.516 approximately, and our p-value, 0.614. That's a really high p-value, so it doesn't look like we had much evidence. That's probably because our sample mean was 826.4. That's really close to the 825. So let's write all this information down in our do step. Now we're ready to conclude. With a p-value of about 0.614, which is greater than alpha equals 0.01, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There's insufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean brightness of the manufacturer's CFL light bulbs is not 825. Now to calculate power, you have to know the truth about the population. So suppose the true mean brightness of the bulbs is 815. The probability that our sample of 14 bulbs will lead us to reject the null hypothesis, that is to correctly conclude that the mean brightness is not 825, is 0.85. So I would consider this test fairly powerful. If the mean is 815, we have a pretty high probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. Now there's two main ways you could increase the power of your test. The first is to increase alpha. This isn't a good idea usually. It makes it easier to reject the null hypothesis by lowering your requirement for convincing evidence. 
So you're simply lowering the bar on what it will take to convince you the null hypothesis is not correct. The second is to increase your sample size. This will decrease the standard deviation of the sampling distribution and allow you to make conclusions with smaller differences between your sample data and the null hypothesis. This is an ethical way to increase power, but it typically costs more money to take larger samples. When the true mean was 815, our power was 0.85. That means 85% of the samples would cause us to reject the null hypothesis. So since 810 is even further away from the 825 we see in the null hypothesis, we expect even more samples to cause rejections of the null hypothesis. So the power would increase. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.